Tracy, for the opportunity to uh, present the peak story. Uh, we're an ASX listed company, market cap around about $25 million, just heading into our bankable feasibility study. So as we talked about this morning in the panel, uh, as you're aware, we've uh, done a financing transaction with Appian and the IFC, which funds us through the, uh, the bankable study. I'll talk a little bit about, a bit more about Appian and IFC uh, further in the uh, presentation, but just wanted to give you an overview of the, the project. We're a, uh, uh, located in southwest Tanzania, in uh, the east coast of Africa. And uh, it's a bastinocyte deposit, so a similar mineralogy to uh, the Mountain Pass uh, deposit at Mollycorp. Uh, but uh, we've got a couple of unique parts of the ore body in terms of the composition is quite a bit uh, simpler from a processing perspective. So I'll talk through uh, a bit on the processing. So that's where we are, southwest Tanzania. I can't say we've got excellent infrastructure and all that sort of stuff because uh, it's not as uh, good as some of the other projects. But rare earths, you're talking about producing, uh, in our uh, PFS case, we were talking about producing 10,000 tonne a year of final product. We're actually now looking at producing about 6,500 tonne a year of product. So rare earth, Mining and uh, processing is more about incoming chemical logistics than it's about the amount of product you've got to ship out. We're not going to talk a lot about the PFS numbers. They are quite dated now. Uh, we're now moving to a hydrochloric acid leach rather than a sulfuric acid leach. And those uh, big breakthroughs in the beneficiation really substantially changed the economics. We've also worked out a way of getting rid of 70 to 80% of our cerium very early in our process. And, Cerium is effectively a loss-making rare earth, so it's very good to get that out of your process as early as possible. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about the market. I think most of, you, uh, most of everybody here is familiar with the market. It's really all about NDPR, as you can see from, uh, from that chart. So high-powered magnets is really our key uh, focus. And 81% of our revenue stream is going to come from NDPR. That's the cross section through the ore body. I can use some of the bingo words for this. It is on the surface, low strip ratio, all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is, you know, rare earth mining is about, it's really chemical processing. The mining side of it is actually quite simple, so I'm not going to dwell. Uh, we have a mine life well in excess of 30 years, so this is a big long life project. Uh, but our as I said before, our big advantage is, is the mineralogy. We're very low in carbonate and phosphate minerals. And really what you're trying to do with rare earth processing is make sure you're not chewing up too much acid. So we're very lucky. We are effectively zero in carbonate and phosphate minerals for our ore reserve, which gives us a really big advantage. Okay, uh, NDPR grade. So I do have to qualify this. This is the uh, NDPR grade on the y-axis and the uh, head grade on the x-axis. This is of all the development projects outside of China. I don't have all the data of the deposits in China. It's just about impossible to get. And it does exclude Amanda's deposit, which is a production asset. So that's how I get away with not putting Linus on our chart. But, uh, <laughs> but as you can see, of all the other development projects in the Western world, we are up at the top there on the NDPR composition. And that's really the key uh, driver, along with the mineralogy for our project, that keeps our capex and our opex cost down. If you've got grade, you've got simple mineralogy, that's what helps. Uh, that's just a cross-section through a piece of the core. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that, but uh, I think another key advantage of the project is extremely low in radionuclides. Our uranium and thorium levels are extremely low. And that also helps keep our processing costs down. OK, so we go through a beneficiation, an acid leach, and a solvent extraction uh, process. That's our beneficiation. We do a barite uh, pre-float. So we get rid of the barite very early in the process. And we take it up to, we've actually achieved an excess of 50% concentrate grades. The dust will settle around about a 35% concentrate grade. Give you an idea, our PFS case was 17% concentrate grade. So we haven't yet ran all the econ updated economics with that upgrade in concentrate grade, but obviously that will substantially help improve the OPEX uh, for the project and also the, uh, the CAPEX. Um, 
And importantly, we're getting rid of 90% of our mass reduction, so we're really reducing the amount of material going into the next phase of the plant. That's the leach recovery. It's a hydrochloric acid leach process is our current uh, thinking. We do a, uh, effectively a calcination process very early in the piece. This is not high pressure baking kilns and stuff. We uh, heat stuff up uh, to about 700 degrees Celsius, uh, add a bit of this, add a bit of that. And uh, basically what comes out of that is we can drop 70 to 80% of the cerium out very, very early. We're only feeding at the front end of this between five to seven dry tonne an hour of material to our plant. So as you can imagine, the back end of this plant is quite, uh, quite small and uh, that will obviously keep the uh, capex cost down. The pre PFS capex was 367 million US, which is also already very, very low for a rare earth project. Uh, but you know, we will obviously see some improvements as we factor through these improvements to the process flow sheet. There's our SX. Um, this is our latest thinking. We're going to look at doing two, uh, two phases of SX. So really focused on the, the NDPR, that's 81% of our revenue. Uh, you know, we've still got more work to do on the market and uh, you know, we've got uh, some uh, good discussions already happening with a number of partners, but the reality is until we finalise all of our pilot plants for our beneficiation and our acid leaches, um, we won't be able to completely finalise the final uh, product suite. Um, we have already, as I said earlier today, pilot planted the SX part of the circuit. We actually went to high purity oxides for all four products, uh, lanthanum, cerium, NDPR combined, and the, the mids and the heavies. So we've been there, we've done it, we've produced this product. So we're very comfortable with, uh, with this part of the process. The beneficiation pilot planting is uh, actually just about to start back in Australia. Uh, but we have already, you know, we've done a lot of test work on this. We've already been using 25 litre sized float cells and getting them to work very successfully. The acid leaching, we've already done a lot of work with Ansto in Australia. So we're feeling pretty confident about that. But obviously it's good to get the pilot plants completed. And that's our key focus over the next uh, six months. So uh, I talked a bit about Appium before, uh, ex-JP Morgan banking guys. Uh, the people involved have raised in excess of $200 billion for mining projects and M&A uh, mining activity. So got a strong financial track record. Uh, you know, got an operating team that built a lot of mines and obviously have some very good contacts. So they open up a lot of doors for a, you know, a West Perth based junior company. We've uh, got partners now that uh, really add a bit, of, uh, a bit of grunt, I suppose, to the team and to the board. And um, you know, we're very, uh, very happy to have them uh, involved. And they also bring a, a good rigour of uh, operating discipline to the, to the company. So uh, uh, you know, it is a private equity arrangement. Uh, we do work hard, uh, but we're very happy to do that. And Appian are a, you know, a seven to 10 year type time horizon investor. Appian and the IFC want to see these plants built. They're not looking for a short-term financial gain. They want to see this thing built. IFC invested over $400 million into uh, Tanzania. Um, so they're obviously very, uh, you know, know the country very well. Uh, we'll be having uh, one of the uh, rep uh, come onto the board from Appian, uh, sorry, from IFC. We have two uh, board reps from Appian already and uh, we're looking forward to welcoming uh, IFC board members. So in terms of path forward, we're in bankable feasibility now. AMEC Foster Wheeler are doing lead engineering on that. We'll have that study finished by the end of 2016. We'll be looking for an investment decision by mid-2017 and then getting into construction off the back of that. And into production, uh, we hope to be commissioning late 2018. Uh, I think uh, I'm not really going to sort of go through that. Um, you know, I've talked about the grade and the, and the, and the mineralogy. Uh, we've got the strong financial partners now to get the job done. And uh, you know, very happy to be in that position. It's uh, not an easy market to raise uh, funding in. And I think it's testament to the quality of the project and the team we've got to uh, move the project forward. Um, I'll wrap up on that. Thank you. Any questions? Yes.